All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale, the first live stream officially. And uh, I want to thank you if you happen to be popping in. Uh, it's going to be rougher than sandpaper on sidewalk here at this point. So uh, the uh, lights obviously ain't dialed in. I look like a creepy dude from a horror movie. But nonetheless, uh, we're just going to rock and roll today. I want to make sure that the live chat's out there. So if anybody can hear me, please drop me a little, uh, a little something inside the comment to tell me, hey, you're live. I can see you. You got Bruce Lee lips. When I say Bruce Lee, think about those old kung fu films where the uh, audio is not lined up. Uh, I was tweaking this earlier here with my brother, and uh, hopefully he'll be popping into the stream relatively soon here. Um, I'm just going to look over here real quick, see how things are looking. Ah, there we go. I see Gore popped in. What's happening, Gore? Dog Dad official. Dog Dad! Raw Dog! Lo uh, love the channel. Thank you very much, Dog Dad. Appreciate it. Got your back, Dale. I'm here. William May. William May, my boy. He's actually going to be uh, in a featured interview tomorrow. 6 p.m. is going to be the launch for the uh, tomorrow's interview. Uh, Kim here. Hey, Kim here. What's happening? I was just watching your live stream from yesterday. Uh, oh, man. I'll tell you what. YouTuber pains and pa pains alike. I I'm telling you, I, I was like, there's times where I feel like I'm going to melt down, but I usually just shut off my phone and put it off to the side. Uh, I just know I, I'm, I'm really bad. I've got a very bad temper. Uh, Gord Eisman, yes, slight audio lag. Okay, I'm going to tweak just a little bit here, guys. So uh, play along with me for just a minute. Um, let's see here. I'm going to try a little bit. All righty. How is that audio lag there? How is it? Is it any better, any worse? Obviously, we want to get this addressed before we start going. Yes, you're loud and clear, and you look like a bald little gerbil. Uh, oh, okay. oh, bald. I, I saw bald like it. I love YouTube, but I also hate that I love YouTube sometimes. <laughs> then I use Twitter as therapy. <laughs> yes, it's it's a OK. That's why I was cracking up when I, I uh, got to watching it, which anybody that's watching this, by the way, uh, can't highly I rec recommend quite a bit of self publishing and writing channels and such. Please take a look over at my newfound friend Kim here. Kim here's got a great channel, a lot of really awesome content. I love her, her spunk, her personality. It just pops. It just really lots of fun. Um, I think the audio is a tad better. So uh, is did I need to get a little bit closer? I'm gonna try this out here. Um, it's gonna take a lot of. I appreciate your patience, everybody. All right, let's give that a shot. Any better? Any better? Any worse? Uh, appreciate you guys being so cool. Oh, thank you for the shout out. Yeah, lags more off for me. Uh, is it better now, Gord? I wish I could just get you on the phone right now and have you uh, help me dial it in. Yep, more off. Thanks, Darren. There's my boy in Canada. I got my two Canadian boys hanging out here today, Darren and Gord. Uh, yep, it's more off. Okay, so let's kick it back. All righty. Thank you. I appreciate it, everybody. Uh, this ain't going to be the prettiest stream in the world, but as soon as we can kind of get things ironed out, we can start rocking and rolling and talk a little bit of Kindle publishing. Hey, Kim, what's your channel name? Uh, Kim here. Uh, literally, all you have to do is, um, uh, Blair, just go over and you're just going to... Uh, <laughs> I can't talk in live stream. You're going <laughs> to click on Kim here's uh, name there, and it'll actually take you to her channel. Uh, highly, highly recommend it. I can't say it enough. Uh, a little better, a little better. Uh, if it's slightly off, we can always go for some tweakage, but is it pretty bearable here, guys? Can can you keep up with me in some capacity? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs up. If I get enough thumbs up, I'll keep going. And if I get too many thumbs down, I'm going to go to Darren's house and I'm going to give him five more children. Awesome. Oh, uh, Blair, yes, yes. Uh, thanks. Bear <laughs> it's bearable. I love that. I've got uh, two of my mods already in here. YouTube.com forward slash Kim here. Yes, uh, go check her out. I, I love her thumbnails. A lot of her stuff's really good. What's happening, Willie Estrada? I appreciate you popping on in. So, uh, man, this is going to be the first live stream. Actually, believe it or not, I had live streams before, but um, this is the first official time because the times that I've done live streams was when I was before 100 subscribers. So, 
We're up to about 900 subscribers. I'm the sexy mod. Uh, Gord, Dog Dad, just want to tell you, Bionic Vapor has arrived. He's just officially said he's the sexy moderator. So you're too kind, seriously. No, uh, I sincerely mean it, Kim. I went through and I peeled through some of your content and it was really good. But in any event, uh, I've done live streams before. I uh, actually did it a lot more over on Twitch. And then, like I said, before I had broke 100 subscribers here on YouTube, now at 900 plus. So uh, very first thing I got to get out of the way, thank you very much. I can't thank you guys enough for uh, all the support, the love, the questions, the comments. This is really cool. So let's start talking business. So hopefully we don't lose Dog Dad official at some point or another. He's going to, ah, oh, here he goes talking about some of that self-publishing again. Uh, so in any event, uh, I need anybody that's in the stream. This is going to sound like one of those webinars, like I'm getting ready to sell you a product, which I'm not, by the way. Uh, anybody here in the self-publishing business or considering in going into the self-publishing business, Bionic Vapor, I know you're already in the self-publishing business. You guys got to see his book. Tremendous. You're doing great. Insanely helpful. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Uh, you deserve all the subs. Hey, hey it, hard work. I think you know. Daily, daily uploads have probably helped me out considerably. So anybody inside the self-publishing business, we know already, I said, I called out Bionic Vapor. I called out Kim here. Come on, let's see. You guys, I don't want just lurkers. I want some participators. So I know you guys are here inside this stream. My wife's a, my wife's a self-publisher. She's uh, hanging out over here. Oh yeah, yeah. Darren, of course you are. My good buddy, Darren, actually, he's one of my uh, close buddies. We talk a lot of shop. Uh, we strategize quite a bit and we strategize even more. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have a book today. Willie, I'm telling you, dude, William, you, is Willie okay? I've never asked that. But William, man, you kill it, dude. You're doing really good. Uh, those of you that are going to find out in tomorrow's interview, William is only in his first book, in his first few weeks, he was able to pump out a bestseller immediately. In fact, actually, if I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, William, even your paperback had busted into the bestsellers list and I believe it actually had topped somewhere in the fifty to 60000 in the, um, the uh, paid bookstore, not just the Kindle version, because the Kindle version, that, you know, you got that number one best selling. But uh, I know that the uh, paperback, uh, Willie Estrada says he's new to the business. Hey, awesome, Willie. So if you ever have any kind of questions, and please, uh, folks, I'm going to give this an open invite. If you happen to be watching this, I encourage you. If you don't feel comfortable in asking a question or concern or comment, make sure that you send it to me via email. And you can do that at dale at selfpublishingwithdale.com. Uh, I'm hyper responsive. I really am. I love talking to people and I love hearing from you. Even some good constructive feedback for videos is always welcome. So, uh, but Willie, if you ever feel um, that you need any kind of questions, please reach out to me. So we've got a Willie and we've got a William. So I, I might get con uh, confused after a while here. Uh, hey, great for paperback. I would like 50,000 ranks all day. See what I'm telling you, William? I told you, man. Uh, and Darren is is a veteran in this business, by the way. Uh Oh, uh, BV, Bionic Vapor. Uh, sorry, guys and gals, that we had the audio ironed out. Is it still lagging just a little bit? Do I need to... I, we kind of adjusted it a little. Call me Big Willie. Big Willie, you got it, dude. My friends call me Jason. I did not know that. You should have told me that. What, am I not a friend now? Um, so let's see here. Uh, the audio is still slightly off. So if you guys can just bear with me, today is probably going to be the train wreck episode as we try to fix things out. Yep, up it some more, Dale. Yeah, we'd upped it and it was a little off. So let me just, I'll kick it a thousand. All righty. All right, BV, what, what's, how's that looking there, brother? My apologies, folks. We're just trying to iron out these issues with OBS and uh, you can do it on the fly. Yep, up it some more. I put it up by about 100, uh, so it's up to about 1,000 milliseconds at this point for the delay. Still off more? Hmm, interesting. This is, this is a fun little problem with before. Um, try it now. How's that audio? The first few minutes of my first live stream was me repeating, is it working? <laughs> I'm glad to know I'm not the only one uh, struggling. Well, see, I've got OBS. Uh, clap. 
bro to 2000. Oh, Gord's saying 2000. Okay. Um, if that clap was off, let me hit it. I'm glad I said something, Gord. Gord, you YouTube. Which, by the way, if anybody is ever curious on how I was able to improve my channel so vastly, so quickly and efficiently, that is because of uh, Gord. Gord is the man on YouTube. He is great at content creation. And uh, I, I, I don't want to say too much about Gord, but right now uh, you guys can check him out at GordIceman.com forward slash work with Gord. And you hit him up over there. This guy is tremendous. He really, uh, his his advice is indispensable. Uh is that the word I'm looking for? Maybe it's not. I should probably look it up. Uh, all right. Am I still off here, folks? Am I off? Drop it back to 400. Okay. So we're a little bit 16. Okay. How was that? Seems to be worse as you go up. Okay. Okay. Yes, the farther you go, the worse it gets. Oh, so it seems like it's, it's separating even more. Yep. Okay, so Gord, I put it up to 2000, so that was probably a little too far. Um, you're going to have a lot of editing when you put it on the podcast. Uh, most likely, William, this one's probably just going to be for you guys. So those of you that are live today are going to be able to catch all this stuff. Uh, come next week, hopefully everything's going to be ironed out and we're going to have a little bit more of a conversation. Uh, today's going to be, like I said, the train wreck episode. So um, let's kick it back. I'm going to try out, uh, 1400. Any better. We're going to go ahead and do the clap again because my brother's over there on the other line. Maybe it's other people's internet connection. Drop it to zero and see what happens. Go figure. Probably we'll drop it to zero and I'll probably just, all right. There is zero. There is zero. Just testing limps. Do more offline testing. I did, Gord. I'm sorry, man. Actually, uh, my brother and I spent probably about an hour uh, messing around with it, and it was working just fine. It's right on. Oh, good freaking Lord. So, uh, Bionic Vapor, <laughs> we completely wasted our time. <laughs> man, you're on. Wonderful. Now we can start talking shop. This is going to be a lot of fun. I don't know why I feel it necessary to look at myself here in the camera. You got it. Awesome. Okay, let's get back to business here, folks. I know that there's quite a few of you that are going to be talking about some self-publishing, but let me just start things off to, if you guys got any kind of questions, comments, concerns, please drop them into the comments. Please, the more participation that I can get, the more likely I'm going to show up for weekly uh, broadcasts. Uh, from some of my email bag, I'm going to go ahead and read some questions actually with a friend of mine. Uh, he hit me up most recently. We got into a video chat, but he asked some good questions. Uh, and I'll go ahead and list those off, and hopefully you guys can shoot some stuff off to me as well. Uh, he said to me, it's obvious that um, uh, he, let me read this so I'm not giving too much personal information. He pretty much asked me, he said, is the key to my long-term sustainability, the reason why I've been so successful in self-publishing, is it because of volume? And uh, I told him it's kind of a tricky question because yes, to a certain extent, there's volume, which my boy Darren knows a little bit about volume. Um, yes, I'm going to get to that one, William. That's an excellent question. Uh, so when it comes to this business, it is about volume to a certain extent, but also quality will always trump that. Quality will always trump because if you can get one, one killer book and you can get behind that book and market it and get out there, do podcasts, uh, do uh a press release, get, get it told of local news stations. Uh, Indie Author Day is coming up, by the way, folks. So uh, don't forget to look up IndieAuthorDay.com, I believe it is. Find your local uh, libraries that are supporting this event and apply for that so that you can show up to your local libraries, actually present yourself as an indie author. But uh, get out there and you can really take one book and make it massive. Now, I can't say that from experience. I have some heavy hitters in my self-publishing brand and my fitness brand itself. Uh, but then there are some other brands that, you know, are a little lighter and I've had some great success. So it's real varied. Uh, so yes, it is about volume to a certain extent, but also it's going to be hugely about quality. If you can get behind one good book, a great example is going to be Steve Scott, excellent self-publisher. I highly recommend you look over at Authority uh, Self-Publishing Podcast. They are phenomenal. They do great work. He and Baron Davenport, 
put on an awesome podcast, lasts about 15 to 20 minutes. But at any rate, Steve, his practice is he releases about one book per month. And he puts one book per month out on a consistent basis. And typically the word count is going to be anywhere from about 10,000 to 15,000 words, all in nonfiction. So, <clears throat> all right. Self-publishing taxes, sole proprietor LCC. What would you suggest? Man, I'm going to tell you this, William, Jason, if I, if I could, is... <clears throat> You got to speak to a qualified professional. There's a good reason why I've danced around this topic and I haven't ever brought up videos on this. I know what has worked for me. So let me share my experience. When I was out in Arizona was when I first started this business and it was literally $60 to file a limited liability corporation. The reason why I wanted to get an LLC was so I could set up a separate account that I was getting paid to and then pay myself as an employee. Essentially, listen, and I'm gonna say this right now again, got a tenuous grasp on all the lawyerings here, all right? I know about bird law, but that's about it. Uh, but in any event, what, and essentially what's gonna happen, let's say for instance, somebody twists their ankle doing using my fitness workout book and they say, it's your fault. Well, they can come in and supposedly, since I have all of my funds being transferred to this particular business and corporation, the corporation is responsible for that. So essentially, since I'm getting paid as an employee, the corporation is going to be sued. Now, I, I'm sure they can probably find some way around this, and I'm sure there's some what-if scenarios and some various learnings that I don't know about. But either way, I'm able to actually open up a business account nonetheless because you need to have some kind of a tax EIN or a tax identifying number that you can open up a bank account. So um, for you, William, I would say this is newbie self-publishers don't start throwing money down the hopper right as soon as you get into this business because there's going to be so many things. You got to buy an ISBN. You got to get a cover designer. You got to buy an editor. You got to get a web designer. You got to file your LLC. You got to be you know, all these different things. And sometimes those things add up. Here's what you need to focus on as a newbie self-publisher is proof of concept. Make sure that you can pr publish enough work that you can prove to yourself that, yeah, this business is for you. Because one of the worst things you can do is throw thousands of dollars into a project to just find out it's not going to work out. Now, if you're like me, the type of person who just burns the boats, then go for it. Um, but for the most part, I would just say until you can kind of prove that you're making some significant income, whatever your idea of significant income is, uh, I wouldn't be throwing a lot of money into things like filing for LLCs or um, cor incorporating things like that. Um, throw everything you can at the book in the first 30 days and watch that rank stick for a long time. Yeah, Darren. Uh, anytime Darren uh, dispenses any advice, by the way, uh, guys, I wholeheartedly endorse it, except for some things. Uh, giving Darren a hard time. Darren's a good guy. Uh, I, let's talk bird law. Yes, yes. That makes a lot of sense for nonfiction, for liability risk. Yeah, a absolutely. And, you know, Kim, there's probably also something to be said about fiction writers as well, that someone could probably come in and go, that was me. You wrote about me. That, that was my life. Now, granted, we have those little disclaimers in the front, but that's not going to stop anybody from, you know, filing litigation against you because they feel that you are, you know, that you have, you know, taken from their life or something like that. So people are so weird. They can get a hangnail picking up your book off a coffee table and decide they're going to go ahead and sue you. In the land of a plenty here in the United States, you know, a person can burn themselves with, you know, McDonald's coffee and get a million dollars because they didn't realize coffee comes scorching hot from, you know, the pot. Hello. That's crazy. Yoga cliff jumping book. Yes. Uh, BV, I think that's a great idea. Oh, I don't, I didn't even think of LLC to help me with that risk. Yeah. You know, uh, Kim, it's just, uh, I've been in the business long enough to understand and know that, um, you, you just can't be too careful. And on top of that too, if you haven't got into this just yet, I know that in my next publication, I will be buying a bulk of ISBNs from Balker. So that way my actual LLC is going to be listed as the publisher as opposed to um, CreateSpace or Amazon or any anybody else that I get the free ISBN from, like be it Drafted Digital, Smashwords, or Pronoun. Um, the problem is, is, as you may know, the brick and mortar stores, man, I'd love to have my books in a brick and mortar store, but unfortunately, 
what ends up happening is, is when we have these automated ISBNs done, we're kind of looked down upon. It wasn't too long ago, and I've mentioned this in a couple of videos before, that um, Ingram Spark had run a seminar before, and they essentially said, there's a good reason why brick and mortar stores don't want to bring your CreateSpace created book, because it has their competitor as the publisher. So that's why they're not wanting to bring your book and put it onto their shelves. So there's where I'm looking at ISBNs. So you, if you have an LLC, you can at least have your LLC attached as that publisher and start to really establish a good brand presence around your actual publishing name. Um, if anyone claimed to be someone who has written about in my erotica books, I want to meet them. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Excellent. Uh, by the way, if you guys see me looking down, I know that BV is going to bust me on this one because he, he's always streaming on Twitch and he tells me exactly what to do and what not to do. Minus the duck to the face. Hmm. 2000 ISBNs. Can I get a bulk discount? Uh, but Darren, here's, here's, okay, let's go ahead and address this. You're just being lazy. Okay. Canada, you can actually get free ISBNs. And I've looked this up and I'll really, all you got to do is prove that you're a resident of Canada and they will provide you ISBNs. So there's a little bit of 411 for everybody on here. If you're Canadian, you get your ISBNs for free. There's a small little hurdle you got to jump through, but let's go ahead and let's compare that to the United States here, where if you want an ISBN through Balker, which I'm going to say this right now, don't buy ISBNs from anybody else. Nobody else. You know, it might seem cheaper, but guess what ends up happening? They get listed as the publisher and then you're screwed. Uh, I did that early on with my Unlock Your Greater Life, my very first book. I bought it, I bought an ISBN because I was like, well, that seems good. And I saw Bacher originally and I thought to myself, well, that's expensive for one ISBN, one for one book. You can't put it on like multiple books. You can't put it on your ebook and you can't put it on your paperback. You have to do one. So I've got it on this paperback. All right it's going to run $125 and I'm pretty sure that's still current now. And obviously if you buy more in bulk, it's going to cost far less. So a lot of these companies are a little bit more predatory and maybe I'm speaking a bit out of turn. If there's anybody who has experience with buying from other third-party companies, my understanding is this is if another company goes and buys these things and they sell them to you for cheaper, there's good reason they get listed as your publisher. So these clowns are ch charging you way cheaper price, but guess what? You're still back at square one. You, granted, you don't have Amazon's name on your stuff and you don't have CreateSpace or Macmillan and company and things like that. But, you know, nonetheless, you're paying for these bargain basement ISBNs that end up biting you in the ass anyways. So uh, definitely going to check into becoming an LLC. Plus my writing is going to become one of the branches of my overall personal brand. So I probably LLC the whole thing. Yeah. It's a good idea, Kim. And, uh, especially with you being in YouTube, at least you can probably start to, uh, use the LLC say when you start to monetize your brand. So if you're putting some affiliate offers down into your description, things like that, uh, it's just kind of a way you can do that. Uh, us bookstores probably don't like Canadian ISBNs. <laughs> I'm curious if there's anybody that ends up watching this at all, if they do have Canadian ISBN, if they have not, if they know that they're not allowing to any kind of brick and mortar stores, that'd be very interesting. I just know for a fact that um, I, the last I checked and it was probably not too, one or two months ago, I did a full video on ISBN. Believe it or not, I try to research and fact check everything I put up. Every now and then it's slightly off and I got to go back and correct myself. But with the ISBNs, when I had researched it, if you buy a thousand of them in bulk on Balker, it runs about a buck a piece. So it'll be about a thousand bucks. I'm leaning towards that direction, but in the same instance, um, for lack of better words, it kind of gets me, um, we'll just say this, it gets me just a little bit uh, tight. We'll just put it that way. Do you feel LLCs lend to brand credibility? Dog dad, that is, that is a great question. Uh, what do you think? Um, what do you guys think? Do you think that it sounds uh, more professional when you have an LLC behind your name? And I'm talking about a legal LLC, not talking about anybody that just, it's like, hey, I'm my brand self-publishing LLC. Yeah, that's not a brand. Um, so what do you guys think? How to promote ebook for other platforms? That's a great question. I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about that. Let's let me pin that for now. And MDWN, I'm just gonna say Miso. Uh, I'm gonna to get to that one. Which, by the way, welcome. I'm glad to see you showed up. 
Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think having an LLC, a limited liability corporation or an incorporation on your company name branded within your books, does that lend credibility to you? Yes, an LLC shows that you took the extra steps and look professional. I, I agree, I agree. I can't tell you how many times I see uh, some people that just put their names down and I'm like, why did you do that? Smiley face, I think so for sure. Darren agrees on this one. Uh, anybody else, uh, dog dad, I don't know if you've already tuned out or if you're lurking or whatnot, but, uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, what do you think, Kelly? I don't think it matters. My wife says it doesn't matter. Yeah. She, she feels it doesn't matter if it has LLC, if it lends uh, credibility to her at the end of the day, I know it all comes down to, <laughs> yeah, right. Darren, I'm sure you are a PhD LLC. <laughs> It's true. How many people read the copyright page and how many people know my LLC name? Uh, though from a standpoint though, let's think about this. If you're attaching it to an ISBN. Oh, okay. I need to get my wife over here. We're just going to have her join the stream. <laughs> I, I understand that then. Willie says, I, I think it does. Yeah. You know, so it just, just think about it. It, it could say Dale L. Roberts is the author, but can you imagine if it said Dale L. Roberts is the publisher? People are going to go scratch their head and be like, Maybe I should approach him about a publishing deal. And that's the other thing too, is, you know, building a further brand that possibly you can bring in other writers underneath that. Although I'm not, that's no uh, bringing in slurp. I do. <laughs> I think it does. Kelly's sketchy though. Don't trust her anyway. That was Darren. Here. I know. <laughs> she, she knew it was you automatically, Darren. All right. Let's go back to Miso's question. Uh, how about to promote either, uh, Promote eBooks for other platforms such as Kobo, Barnes and Noble, etc. Me, so I gotta tell you, um, the Kindle publishing alternatives are pretty new to me. Uh, in fact, I would say up till about earlier this year, I moved all of my publications. Well. 90% of them over to the Kindle Publishing Alternatives. And when I say Kindle Publishing Alternatives, my preferred ones are Smashwords. I do most of my distribution through Smashwords. I get a nice little chunk of change from them. Uh, I have also draft the digital big shout out to draft the digital. They are so awesome to me. They do a lot of support, a lot of tweeting, um, and they are really starting to change this business. And I had some great news that I shared this past Monday about their new interior formatting. And then my, Personal favor is pronoun because they have Google play distribution. And here's the crazy part. You guys are going to probably die on this one. It literally with just one distribution channel that I utilize through pronoun, I'm able to make about 50% of what I make over on Smashwords, which is phenomenal. Uh, so it just shows you, goes to show that Google play is an extraordinary opportunity. It's just too bad. We can't get directly in there anymore. Unfortunately, unless you were grandfathered in on a deal. You won't be able to get in there. I've put my books on Smashwords, but I've heard great things about Draft the Digital. Yes, uh, Kim, uh, I don't know if you've ever had the formatting errors that Smashwords sometimes runs into. And for me, I got a lot of problems because I had a lot of tables uh, for my workouts, I had a lot of pictures, I had a lot of metadata in the background, and I literally had to nuke every single document, and it would take me up to hours of doing it. Go figure, you just dump the, the regular document over into Draft the Digital and it just converts it like that. It's just amazing. So can't speak highly enough to draft the digital. They're wonderful. Um, and if you get a moment, go over to my recent, the best Kindle publishing alternatives, a review of Smashwords versus draft the digital versus pronoun. It'll show you the comparison of each of the three right there. And it's completely unbiased. It's me sharing what their distribution platform or where they're distributing to. So you may just want to at least consider uh, trying out pronoun to get your stuff over to Google play and trying out draft the digital to get it to, I think the unique distribution they have is Playster and 24 symbols. Uh, I get a small, like literally like pocket change enough for a coffee. I think for, uh, for the, from the month for uh, 24 symbols, it's nothing to write home about, but Hey, look, I'll take that because considering these books were probably getting me when I was on KDP select 50 cents a best at, at a month. And this was from like hundreds of page flips. It's just, it was stupid. I was losing, you know, money hand and fist. Yes. Thankfully my husband's a computer engineer and just fixes it for me. You lucky dog. I'm telling you what now up that. I think that my wife can probably tell you exactly how I feel about Smashwords formatting. I lose my freaking mind. 
Yeah, she's she's like, yep, she's getting ready to leave. She's like, yeah, on, on that note. But uh, excellent. Uh, so uh, to go back to Miso's original question of how to promote other eBooks for uh, other platforms. Uh, so right now, there's many irons that I have in the fire for the channel. And one of the things I'm looking into is actually getting advertisements on Apple. The issue that we're running into with Apple is if you use any aggregate distributor like Draft the Digital or Smashwords or Pronoun. The problem is that third party company has to do the advertising. So I just can't simply set up an account for Apple and start to run ads. If I want to run ads for a particular book on a particular platform, I literally have to be on that platform. So unfortunately, Miso, I, I can't really fully answer that because I only know what I know at this point. So that's the most that I know. As far as promoting, it's just going to the old school, old fashioned method of doing things is just brand awareness, getting over onto your website, uh, YouTube. I can't tell you enough great things about it. If you're not a very uh, photogenic person, you're not very comfortable in front of the camera, you can always even do some kind of like a screen share to where you flip through the pages and read a little bit of your book and put that up as a sample chapter over on YouTube and then just drive traffic to it. YouTube ads, by the way, are stupidly cheap like dumb, like stupid cheap. We're talking, uh, I put an ad up the other day for five bucks for a day for one of my videos and it cost me a, a cent per view. So I had about 500 views for one full day. Um, the retention, thankfully, since it was such a short video was tip, it was right around 48%, which is, it's decent. It's decent. I got to catch up here with you guys. Um, so uh, any event, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover a couple more questions. And if there's uh, nothing else you guys want to contribute over towards this direction, we'll probably wrap up today. And I really appreciate everybody's uh, patience as we ironed out all the issues. How long have I been running this business? Uh, that's a great question. And I think I've kind of answered this to a certain extent, but I started doing self-publishing at about 2014. 2013, technically, I started writing and produced my first book. In 2014 was when I really started taking it serious and I left my job. Uh, I really didn't see any good results until probably the last year because I finally started taking it seriously and became a student of the game. Um, the Scorp192 says, Hi, new to publishing. Was wondering what steps do you usually go through to get your book ready to publish once you receive it from your writer? Ah, great, great question. So... Hey, what's happening, Battle Rain? Thank you very much for tuning in. So, uh, Scorp, hopefully I can call you Scorp. There's so many things, and this is one of the things I try to communicate if I do hire a freelance writer is I set expectations as far as getting the formatting as on point as possible or sending to, to me stripped down. Because herein lies the problem. I'll share a little bit of a story that I had with Babelcube. I had a translator for one of my books into German. The problem was... She got everything formatted. It looked beautiful on the inside, but unfortunately, it had too much stuff that were wasn't quite incongruent throughout the whole book. So there were some fonts uh, a certain way here on this page, and the next page it was all off. So it was just it was just a mess. And then when I tried to upload it over to Babelcube, and Babelcube's auto formatting device is very similar uh, to Smashwords in that if you don't get it just right things are going to be all jacked up. So I was missing chapter titles. Uh, some places were justified. Some places were left aligned. So if I were to recommend anything to you is either A, tell your writer exactly what you want as far as the heading goes, as far as the body font goes, as far as if you need it set for eBooks. So you're going to want to make sure that there's margins. If there's paperback, uh, the size of that. For me, I'm kind of a control freak. Most times I just try to tell any freelance writer or anybody that's working on translation, just send it to me completely nuked. And I think that uh, Kim here understands what nuked means because that's what Smashwords word, uh, refers to it is no, no formatting whatsoever because it takes me much quicker to go through and format something than to unformat it and start from scratch. Because when I've got to go through it, I got to do this extra step and there's background metadata, it's going to mess it up. So um, 
the steps that I typically do, and I'll, I'll be releasing a video, I'm sure, soon enough. And, you know, probably it would make sense if I just shared it with you guys. Why don't we do this? I'm going to switch over to display. We're going to have a little bit of fun here. And uh, hopefully you guys can see my desktop, and you guys can see the chat here. And what I'm going to do is, let me see if I can open up. All right, and I'm just going to see if we can open up a recent. Bear with me here, folks. Let's just take one of my uh, scripts here. Yeah, let's do suggested royalty free sites. All righty. Before I do move on, can everybody see this okay? Oh, no naked pictures of me on his desktop. No, not anymore, dude. Um, that's just kind of weird. Let me just make sure that we're good. Everybody can see the uh, Microsoft Word. I just switched over here to... Yes, thank you very much, William. Yes, we can see it. Okay. All right, so um, to explain it to you, let's just say, for instance, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just nuke this document. We're going to go ahead and open up Control-N. I'm going to open up a new one. And what I do typically for nuking a document, I'll copy the entire document, and then I'll just keep text only and I come on here you see how it's nuked it's there's no formatting so everything's normal the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to highlight or I just at least put my cursor on the line so I've got suggested royalty free images I'm gonna make that heading one uh, there are some formatting softwares from one side to the next that require heading two but for me I go for heading one the one that actually is very picky about that is Smashwords. if you come down into here one of the things I really recommend and this is a commonly misunderstood item is Justify, folks. Justify, justify, justify. If you've got a body of a text, please justify your stuff. This is not a third grade, you know, report. You're not putting this in looking like this, where it is just left aligned or or right aligned, you know, or centered. So, you know, the gold standard is justification. You want to make sure you have everything justified. You see that little extra few bars up there? You're going to justify that. So, um, let's just pretend. I want to take one of these items and I'm going to make this heading two. Let's get rid of the bullet point. Excellent. So now I've made this one of a uh, heading two. So typically what I'll do is I'll go through each one of these. I'm going to get it back out of the screen share here, guys. So hopefully you get an idea. Uh, what I try to do is um, I don't want to look at myself. Come on, Dale justify that black screen whoops um thanks for for yes you went to black go figure uh bv i'll probably need some of your help so in any event um we seen zero of that dale uh, we're back yeah sorry guys sorry unfortunately it was all black the whole time yeah uh we'll have to iron those things out um but sorry scorp i wasn't able to share some of those things for you uh long story short is this is um I try to go through, make sure the entire document is nuked. I put all my headings on the heading chapters. I get all of my stuff so it's justified. So there is the alignment that's either left aligned, centered, or right aligned. I can't tell you how many times I've opened up self-published books that have left alignment. Left alignment is bad. It's bunk. It's bush league. Please clean that up. How many books do you actually see on the market that have left alignment? And the ones that do, I'm telling you, that they probably can't be drawing flies. I'm sure someone's going to go... Prove me wrong. They'll be like, yeah, well, actually, Neil James put out a book. So in any event, um, yeah, the formatting gets so, so much more in uh, depth. So Scorp, I really appreciate the question. Um, sadly, I didn't see all of your comments, guys. So hopefully I didn't lose too many of you all at once. Well, any event, rather than me bloviating for too long and such, I'll probably have to see about uh, fixing out some of these issues. Are there any last questions before we part ways? Any last questions? Because otherwise, I'm not going to make this too awkward. I will find one more. Ah, uh, there we go. There's a good question. I'm still here just taking notes. Ah, wonderful. Wonderful. Kindle Direct Publishing, when you're doing ads, when it says estimated total sales, does that mean the ad drove traffic for your sales that they are referring to? You understood for the most part. <laughs> Sorry about that, Scorp. Okay, William, 
William brings up a pretty good point on Amazon marketing services in regards to Kindle. All right. I'll probably talk about Amazon marketing services on uh, other areas, but we're going to focus on Kindle for right now. And estimated total sales is yes, what your ad has produced. Bearing in mind that Everything is delayed on your Amazon marketing services report, which by the way, if any of you are on here and are a pu published author on Amazon and have it through Kindle direct publishing, if you're not doing Amazon marketing services, get with me, uh, drop me an email and I'll get with you. And we can even have just a 15 to 20 minute chat and I can show you just how simple and how cheap it is. Literally I can drive traffic for about a buck a day and I have an incredible ROI on it. And, uh, but so you're saying estimated sales, does that mean the ad drove? Yes, that's exactly what it means. Laugh out loud. Thanks. I understood for the most part. Uh, I'm still reading the same stuff here, guys. So Amazon marketing services, William, one thing that you're going to want to pay attention to, and this is something that everybody should pay attention to when you open up, <laughs> I wish I could screen share this. Uh, when you open up your report, you have a video on it. I saw it. LOL. Yes. Yes. I do have a video. So if you miss it, please go, go back and check it out. I'll be getting back to you for the next month, probably. Yes, uh, by all means, Ken, please hit me up for sure. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I would be more than eager to meet up with you. So that's, uh, you, you know where to get a hold of me. But at any rate, when you have Amazon marketing services, what I would really recommend is focus on your ACOS. That's the average cost to sale. That percentage is where your sweet spot is. You need to pay attention to that in regards to your royalty of the book. So let's say for instance, I have the stretch workout plan. We'll pretend like this is the stretch workout plan. And I got this set at, let's say, I'm just gonna throw a random number out here. I think it's 499, maybe 599. Uh, I've got a set of 499, okay? And I'm collecting 70% through Kindle Direct Publishing on this one. So I'm gonna put in about a buck per ad, we'll say, and I put like a nifty copy, like, you know, stretch more, feel better, uh, don't break your neck, whatever. Uh, that's a bad ad, by the way, terrible ad copy. <laughs> so, um, any event, uh, what is the name of the video? You have a video. Oh, uh, the name of the video is going to be Amazon marketing services 101. Uh, so you'll want to look that up. Yeah. Uh, in fact, when I get off here, I can always be able to put the, uh, the link in the description. Well, actually I probably won't keep this one up. You guys are going to be the only ones that get to see this. So yes, it's uh, Amazon Marketing Services. You can always type in Amazon Marketing Services 101 and Dale and uh, in the YouTube and it'll, it'll pull it right up. And there's actually even a case study that I went from that specific ad and showed you guys how it works. So ACOS is where, where we're gonna worry about. If your book, let's say my stretch workout plan is 70% royalty, look at your ACOS, pay attention to that. How much are you willing to lose and pay and not get any sales. So my gold standard is typically about five bucks before I, I cut an ad. I know I'm a cheapskate, whatever, but I've gotten to the point that literally I can start up a new ad and test out a different ad copy. So I'm willing to lose five bucks without making a single thing. But as soon as that I get my first sale, ACOS, the percentage is going to change. Of course, it's average cost to sale. That's going to be ad spend versus how much you actually sold. So you take that percentage, let's say for instance, it's 20% ACOS, all right? I take that 20% and I subtract it from the royalty that I have here, okay? So 20% subtracted from 70% from my book, it's gonna give me 50%. Then I take that percentage and I multiply it by my total estimated sales. So if I had, let's say $20 in sales, then that means that I'm going to profit right about $10. Not too bad, especially if your ad spend is relatively low. And if you've got an ACOS that's at 20%, I would think that it's gonna be pretty phenomenal. Uh, one of these times, as soon as I can get the whole issue of sharing, screen sharing, that uh, I can be able to get you guys and I'll show you a little bit behind my account and a little bit behind the steering wheel. I feel okay in sharing that information about how I do some of the, uh, the Amazon marketing services ads. So in any event, um, all right. Well, hey, very good. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. And instead of me uh, blowing up, I want to keep you guys interested. So going into next week, this is my challenge to you guys. Uh, I'm coming back here live. I'm hopefully going to take a little bit of time to figure out the whole issue why the screen went black on me when I went to a screen share because I want to show you guys some stuff and how I do it. Uh, any event, 
Do you have questions? If you have questions, please send it to Dale at, at uh, selfpublishingwithdale.com. I almost forgot my own email address. Uh, so once again, that's Dale at selfpublishingwithdale.com. I encourage you, if you're on this stream and you're curious about anything that I spoke about, please reach out to me by email. Uh, I am very approachable. I had somebody call me a celebrity today, and I'm sure my brother who's in the stream right now can probably tell you otherwise. Yep, going to bring my tool bed over to figure that out. Excellent. I appreciate it. So uh, in any event, we'll get everything kind of ironed out. So that is my suggestion to you. If you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up. Share it with somebody that you love and like. Share this channel, please. The more, the merrier. Anybody that's into DIY publishing. So till later, this has been Sub Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you guys soon.